As the sun rises here in Berlin, the remaining players awake, hoping to turn their dreams into reality. We are into the money, and the title is now in sight. Kevin McPhee has a proven pedigree here in Berlin. I have a certain amount of confidence and a certain amount of intimidation factor, so I'm gonna try to just capitalize on that as much as I can. But standing in his way are a ton of EPT heavyweights, as well as a horde of local talent, all looking to crush the competition and become the champion of the Berlin leg of the PokerStars.com EPT. The city of Berlin is enriched with history, and with so many stunning landmarks, this beautiful setting attracts thousands of visitors every year. But over the last few days, it's the Spielbank Casino that's been drawing the crowds. Players have battled their way through two days of grueling poker, and from the 745 that entered this tournament, just 102 have made it to the start of day three. Everyone left is guaranteed at least 7,500 euros. But everyone who still has chips in front of them will be focused on the title and the first place prize money of 825 grand. Last time, the money bubble burst at the expense of EPT7 London champion David Van Plu. I'm going home with no money, but on, on to the next one, I guess. He'll have to wait until the grand final for the chance and a repeat win. Three other EPT champs had better days. Anton Wig and Vladimir Gesch combined ended the day first and second in chips, respectively, whilst former Berlin winner Kevin McPhee is still in contention. All of the EPT champions are all friends with each other, and it's definitely like a huge competition to try to see who can be the first to be the two-time EPT champion. The formidable Swede stands a great chance to get that monkey off his back. At our feature table is EPT7 Snowfest champion Vladimir Geshkinbein, and he'll do anything to replicate that success. Snowfest was my first EPT win. That was amazing. It meant a lot to me. I love winning, like everybody. Probably even more than everybody. Kevin McPhee won this event two years ago, so he'll want to use his experience to go all the way. This is the room that I lifted the trophy in, so it feels like I'm actually doing my title defense this year, so it feels great to be playing good and running good, and it feels just like two years ago. And completing the trio of champs is Anton Wig. He took down EPT Copenhagen in 2010 and starts the day as chip leader. I enter every tournament to try to win. Uh, being a two-time champion would obviously be amazing. It's nice to be recognized for all the hard work you've put in. Out in the field is Vanessa Selbst. Can the newly qualified lawyer raise the bar and take down her first EPT? In January of this year, 2012, I graduated from law school because I wanted to be a civil rights lawyer. If you ask me what changed, I mean, basically, I realized that I just, my passion for poker was really too deep to just leave it behind. You know, I guess once a poker player, always a poker player. Well, day three has kicked off with a bang. Anna Marquez started the day as one of the short stacks, and no surprise, she was one of the first to hit the rail. But we still have our trinity of champions hoping to make EPT history. Trinity of champs? What happened to the eye candy? I'm gonna go see if Anna's okay. For her sake, please don't. On behalf of all the citizens of Sputardia, I find that statement to be derogatory. The correct term is Sputarden. Well, this guy is probably the subject of that tweet. He doesn't actually have an account, but the world needs a fake Chengiz Aluzu on Twitter this instant. Chengiz Aluzu, he will abuse you. Also on the feature table is Kun Davisha, who's got seven EPT caches and recently final tabled Campioni. What do you say you give me even money that Aluzu and Geshkinbai end up in some huge confrontation? No bet. Blinds two and a half thousand, five thousand. Gesh can bind first to speak. It's an under the gun raise to eleven thousand. Ace king for Davisha. Will we see the three bet? No, just a call. Either respecting the under the gun raiser or Davisha might think Vlad's likely to bluff off a bunch on this hand. 
Florian Donut has ace queen suited. Donut is dominated. Generally in Hold'em, you're taught to be the aggressor, but in this spot, I think a just call might really be the better move. He makes it 27,000. He has three bet. Now, if you raise, you just have to be prepared to call a shove. Ace queen suited is way too strong to three bet fold. Fold it around to the blinds. Chengiz Aluzu gets out of the way. Jens Weigel also passes. Back on Gesh combine. Tough to stay involved at this point. He gets out of the way. Back on Devisha. Kuhn's hand strength is a little disguised by the fact that he flatted first time around, so he could try to get some more money in here. Molden. He shoves. Donert's put himself in a bad spot. Ace Queen suited is such a strong hand. Better to have just taken a flop with it in position. Even if you whiff fold, you lose less money than folding here would. Or you can call and probably lose it all. I don't want to flip with you. Oh, Florian, you donut. <laughs> I also don't want to be completely dominated and smashed to bits by you. Three bet folding, ace queen off suit, totes fine. Ace queen suited, not so much. The Vicious chipping up to nearly 300k. We're heading to the secondary feature table now. Anton Wig has raised to 10,000. Martin Jakobsen has called. Action is on Tim Bettingen. Bettingen didn't get out of line too often from what we saw of day two's action. That is a three bet. He's re-raised to 28,500. Back to Wig, the original raiser. He four bets. 66 and a half. In general, four bets mean business. Jakobsen's folded. 66,500. Bettingen with the decision. He decides to shove. Anton Wig makes the call. I don't see this being a five bet bluff. Ace, queen for Bettingen, tens for Wigs. We are flipping. Not exactly the two monsters I was expecting, lols. There's an ace on the flop, and Bettingen takes the lead. I think both these guys are lucky to not be totally crushed here. Lols again. Bettingen has to fade a 10 on the river. Fade successful. Ship it. Boy, that was a dramatic burn and turn. And the river is... It's an 8. Come on, let's go. Tim Bennigan, 5-bet shoving with ace-queen, gets called and is somehow not behind. Now he's doubled up. Just one of those unavoidable confrontations, I guess. Bettingen doubling up through former tournament ship leader, Anton Wig. <laughs> Heading out onto the floor, we find Kevin McPhee, the man who took down this tournament two years ago. Kevin McPhee's poker skill is only surpassed by his skill at getting massages. Well, Mark Wright has shoved the river here. That would put Dimitri Stelmak all in. He's the effective stack with just over 180,000. And Stelmak makes the call. You can tell he didn't really want to. Mark Wright was value shoving. He's got tens for a full house. He's actually got two full houses. Surely two full houses are good. And Stelmak hero called with deuces. Stelmak fell for the old polarizing river shove routine. The right stuff. And I'm sorry, but is that a pajama shirt? Well, that man in the pajama shirt has just taken the tournament chip lead. Mark Wright now playing a stack of more than 773,000. Vladimir Gesh combined second in chips. Anton Wiggers dropped down to fourth. Two players still in the top 10 who were there for most of day two, Cesar Garcia and Bahadir Kilikaza. back to our feature table. Action on Florian Donut. 10 queen, he'll pass. Chaddy Mahej has eight nine of hearts. What a squeeze, I've seen less drama in a Tennessee Williams play. Great. He raises to 10 and a half. Chengiz Aluzu passes. Lana Magesh combined has ace jack suited in the cutoff. Merhej hasn't been all that active, so his early raise will likely get some respect. Gesh combined just calls. A fold from the button and from Devisha in the small blind. And Kenny Hicks gives up the big blind. Two players to the flop. 
Mahesh out of position. He does have the pre-flop betting lead. He flops second pair. Gesh combined flops top pair. Both players flop what would be the best hand most of the time. Mahesh continues for 13,000. Good spot for Vlad to just call. Maybe Mahesh will fire again. Gesh combined has called. The turn brings the deuce of clubs. That deuce is going to look like a brick, but Merhej has to ask himself what Geshkinbein called the flop with. It was a fairly dry board. He bets again. It's a virtual all-in. 80k! I usually get this in pre, and now I flop this. Top, top. Hard to get away from. You haven't played any hands yet. How much? 100k? Merhej knows he's not winning this hand with a value bet. He's turned it into a bluff. I honestly don't know how Ace-Jack can fold. I don't think I can fold this one now. He calls, and Mahesh bets the river blind for his remaining six. Oh, well, I didn't expect that. Backhanded compliment? Or backhanded backhand? No help for Mahesh on the river. He's eliminated. Black check again. I didn't like that call, man. I'm not sure what's not to like about it. Most players are happy to call top top in that spot. Cash combined, chipping up to 872,000. He has retaken the tournament ship lead. Heading to the outer tables, where Kevin McPhee has four bet. Philip Gruesome. Hard to take a stare down seriously when the dude's getting a massage. Oh, Gruesome shoves. Call. Kevin McPhee calls. McPhee tables queens, Gruesome shows ace king. This is the all time cruelest race, like Batman versus Superman. It's a shame that one of them has to lose. How does Batman ever win that race? Uh, you don't think Bruce Wayne keeps some kryptonite around? You're an idiot. Well, with a queen on the flop, McPhee pretty much seals the deal. And Gruesome doubles him up. Hey, you win some, you Gruesome. Did you really just do that line? I also have this one. I've got a McFeever, and the only cure is macaroni and McPhee's. Thank heavens we're about to take a break. Kevin McPhee now amongst the tournament ship leaders. Welcome back to the European Poker Tour from Berlin at the Grand Hyatt, hosted by the Spielbank Berlin. Just before the break, we saw former Berlin champ Kevin McPhee double up with Pocket Queens to keep that second EPT title in his sights. Just how long is this massage? This girl's got a family to get home to, Kevin. McPhee in a hand against Andrei Zachenko. You know, if poker doesn't work out for Kevin, I think he's maybe got a career as a prison guard. Well, Kevin checked to the Russian, and he bets 50500 on the turn. I would not want him tossing my cell or anything else for that matter. McPhee makes the call, and we go to the river. Which was an overbet, by the way. Or a diamonds. Doesn't look like it's changed anything. Kevin checks. Here comes another barrel. Another big bet by the looks of things. 112,500. That's about 80% of the pot. Avoiding the stare down. And Kevin McPhee will fold a king. Zychenko will win that pot. Is he still doing the stare down? I can't tell with those things on. All I know is the warden ain't gonna be happy about this. Someone tell him the hand's over. He doesn't have to do the stare down anymore. Kevin, hello? Kevin? There's a couple of guys on the EPTs that have been crushing pretty hard lately. I, maybe you've heard of Steve O'Dwyer and Mike McDonald. They have both pretty fierce stare downs. Even when he's bluffing, he's staring down people, and they don't want to look back at him. So uh, I've been trying to incorporate that a little bit more. I had a good one for about 10 minutes where I just cowboy faced the guy. We call it cowboy facing. There's no expression whatsoever. 
and I had to sit there stoic. I didn't answer, I didn't move. <laughs> it was really kind of a sweat, but yeah, I've been working on it, and uh, it seems to be working well, so I'm gonna keep trying it. The cowboy face. Yeah, you know those cowboys, famous for always staring at things. He knows it's a stare down and not a steer down, right? New player at the feature table, Welcome Martin Jakobsen taking the two seat. Uh, I'm afraid poker blogging's not been the same since Joe Stapleton retired. Ah, uh, yeah, there are far fewer mistakes now. Now let's get back to the action here on Berlin day four. Three. Well, now I make my mistakes on TV instead. Action is on, Martin Jakobsen. Not gonna play this hand. Cengiz Aluzu on the button. Aluzu's kind of a wild card. That's pocket eights. He's likely confused at having two cards that look so similar. He's going for a raise, a big raise to 17,000. Fairly ob spot for a three bet. Gesh combine makes it 53,000 total. Kalaniemi in the big blind will fold, so it's back on Aluzu. We've known Aluzu to call much lighter than this. Call in this case would be perfectly fine. Both players pretty deep. Cool, cool. Cool. So good, Aluzu calls twice. I wonder what he was thinking about so long. And the flop has an eight on it. Iluzu simply cannot lose you. Gesh Combine had the pre-flop betting lead. Looks like he wants to continue. He bets 62,000. I think Iluzu's safe to just call here and see if he can get Vlad to fire again on the turn. Not a whole lot out there to worry about other than the diamonds. He calls. Oh my god, I've seen less peacocking at the Berlin Zoo. The turn card is the six of clubs. Gesh Combine now checks. Luckily for him, slowing down. Luce has got to see what he's feeling here. He bets 100,000. This guy's kind of a tell box. Even without the live reads, I think this is a perfect spot to just get away from this, especially because if you call here, you basically have to call the river too. And Gash Combine does call. Not a huge fan of that call. I could see betting and then folding if you get raised, but check calling is a weird line to take against a guy who doesn't usually bet unless he has it. Three of clubs on the river, nearly 440,000 in the middle. Gash Combine checks, Aluzu bets, Gash Combine snap calls. You think Aluzu likes his play? Take it easy, buddy. Like my high school gym teacher used to say, quit waiting for the award ceremony, get back in there. Also, he'd say, Stapleton, why are you crying? Aluzu, up to nearly a million in chips. That river bet was large, but really small relative to the size of the pot, made it pretty easy for Vlad to call on the river. Gesh combined down to 531,000. I love this guy. Can we have him at every feature table? Plus one. Stuck his chips. <laughs> well, it's gonna take him a while to stack all those, cause that was a big one. Florian Donut will fold. Flash. Martin Jakobsen saw one of those cards as he folded. All in. Jakobsen shoving for eighty-seven thousand five hundred. Caught. Aluzu calling, he's got eights again. Chengis Aluzu loves calling, however, unlike some of his spots, this time it's 100% the right play. And Martin Jakobsen is at risk. He's racing with two over cards against Aluzu's pair. Die Ach, die Lacht. Was that Turkish or Flemmy German? Die Ach, die Lacht. Somebody get him a glass of water. He's asking for an Acht. Er macht ein Acht. Ace ball. Well, he definitely needs an Acht now, because Jakobsen's hit his ace. Alusu hasn't really seemed to notice. Don't waste too much time stacking those chips. Fosten. Maybe he just needs something to spit in. And the Acht. Will he get his Acht? The Acht. Nine, es ist ein Sex. That was nice. Jakobsen doubles up. Nur wenn sie lachen, muss sie lachen. 
That's about one interesting. Yep, totally with you there, bro. You know what he's saying? Did I mention that I practically failed A-level German? I can tell you that Chingiz Aluzu is now second on the leaderboard behind Mark Wright. Vladimir Geshkinbein drops down to seventh. Anton Wig's still up there, and Vanessa Selbst has worked her way back into the top ten. He may be in the top five, but Anton Wig is on the decline, having started day three as tournament chip leader. Looks like Jan Heitman's all in. He's been caught by Thomas Chibak. Soren Vors with the decision. He folds Jacks face up. Chibak has ace king, Heitman has eights. We're racing. Vors folded the best hand. And he's still stacking his chips in tens. <laughs> A set of eights for Heitman. Chibak drawing dead on the flop. And Chibaka is back to the spice mines of Kessel. Love the way there's a king on the turn, just to kind of rub it in. Oh man, cheer up, dude. At least you cash. You're breaking my heart over here. And he hasn't actually been eliminated, although he did do more than 100,000 chips in that hand. Wait, he wasn't even out? Jan Heitman doubled up for like 40 big blinds? Get over it, dude. Back to the feature table. Aluzu has got a musical streak. Who would have thunk it? He's so talented. Folded around to Kundavisha in the cutoff. Jack eight off suit, and he's raising. Makes it 12,000 to play. Fairly standard from late position. Kenny Hicks folds from the button. Florian Donut doesn't want to play the small blind. Queen 10 for Martin Jakobsen. And he will defend. So far, this is all pretty standard. Raising wide late, defending with two Broadway cards. Yep, yep. Both players miss the flop. Jakobsen's queen high, still good. They both got some backdoor draws, I guess. It's all about the backdoors. Jakobsen's got the best hand, but is out of position. He checks to Devisha, who continues for 14,000, and Jakobsen quickly folds. I'd have been very surprised if Jakobsen had stuck around in that hand. Devisha adds 18,500 chips to his stack. And from one Belgian pro to another, Davide Katai has Stefan Albertini at risk, although Albertini's a big favorite here. Katai is behind, but not at risk of going broke. Safe flop for Ace King. There's a jack on the turn, but it is the jack of diamonds. Albertini has a flush draw. He's got a bajillion outs. Doesn't hit any of them. Yep, that's a rough one. Albertini's Ace King cracked by Ace Jack. Davide Katai actually going for the Triple Crown here in Berlin. He already has a World Series bracelet and a WPT title to his name. A double crown. Doesn't sound quite as good as a Triple Crown, though. No. Action on the feature table is on Vladimir Gesch combined. He folds under the gun. Kalanimi's out. This is Cohen de Vischer. Kenny Hicks. Nine ten of clubs. Pretty standard spot for a raise, except that Kenny Hicks doesn't really have a ton of chips. Hey. He makes it 12,000. It's a min raise. Florian Donat has Queen Jack of Diamonds in the cutoff. And he calls. Pretty strong hand in position. Jack Deuce off suit is not a strong hand. Martin Jakobsen will fold. Chengiz Aluzu has ace 10 suited in the small blind. Good spot for a three bet. There it is, 33,000 total. Excellent three bet out of position. It's an easy fold if you get four bet. What is that, five five of diamonds? Five nine of diamonds, and Walter Beckman will fold. Well, the original raiser, Kenny Hicks, gets out of the way. It's back on Florian Donut. Tough fold for Hicks. I think you can call there if you have more chips. Florian can certainly make this call in position. And he does call. Let's see a flop. That flop is Jack 9 5. Top pair for Donut. Elusu gives up the lead. Donut looks like he thinks he can start betting for value now. We know Elusu is likely to call from time to time. Donut bets 35,000. Elusu makes a splashy call. Bizarre body language aside, I'm not a huge fan of this call. Actually, include the bizarre body language in things I'm not a fan of. I'm not sure what the point of a call here was. I guess we're gonna find out. All in. Wow! Picks up a monster draw on the turn and shoves. 
That was an amazing card for a loser to hit. And he's made a pretty gutsy play here, but I think this is an easy call for Queen Jack. A check call on the flop after three betting makes it hard to believe a loser's got much of anything here. Jacks are one hand that might play it this way, but they're so, so unlikely. This kind of reeks of error or a draw. Call. Donut makes the correct call. Say hello to my little blind. Alusu, though, has a lot of outs. They're practically flipping here. Timberlake here standing up to do a little dance. You ready? Any ace, any queen, any seven, any heart. Alusu hoping to bring sexy back. Door draw. 17 outs for Alusu. But the eight of clubs isn't one of them. Hammer, don't hurt him. Florian Donut gets the double up. And Aluzu loses a decent chunk of his monster stack. I liked where Aluzu's head was at there, but just the line he took, it's almost impossible for him to have a big hand there. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to PokerStars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. Back to day three of the PokerStars.com EPT Berlin main event. Before the break, we saw Chengiz Aluzu put Florian Donut to the test. He set him all in, all in, putting the young German's tournament life at risk. We caught up with two Canadian pros to see how they deal with the situation. Pre-flop, uh, Kenny Hicks raised to 12,000 in the hijack. Hey. Florian calls next to act. Oh. So it folds to uh, Kangas in the small blind, and he squeezes to 33,000, which is really small. Nice. Kenny folds, and Florian calls. He makes the call. Flop comes Jack 9 5, Rainbow. As the pre flop aggressor, it's often worthwhile to bet just since you'll, you'll often have turn cards which allow you to win the pot as well. Kangas checks. Here I'd usually assume that Chengiz has something that's reasonably, reasonably strong, like a, a mid-pair type hand. Okay. Florian bets 35,000 and Chengiz calls. I'd be happy to just bet and pretty much just get all the money in. When you're calling a three bet with Queen Jack suited for this large percentage of your stack size, this isn't exactly a board where you want to be folding it. Turns the eight of hearts and Kangas just decides to lead all in. All in. Such a strange line for him to take with anything that's remotely decent or has, you know, has a hand as strong as Queen Jack beats, so uh, there's no way I'm folding there. I think Florian uh, definitely makes the right play in calling off the rest of the stack there. I call. In the end, Florian has Queen Jack for top pair in a gutter, so you're almost getting a price against the worst case scenario, so when you're getting a little bit two to one here, you just you just have to call this all in. Ricard is the eight of clubs, and Florian will double up. But I think the bottom line is I would probably just fold pre-flop in Florian's shoes, so I probably wouldn't have even gotten to that point. Andrew Chen would have folded pre-flop. Then how would you have doubled up, you dingus? Check this out, I'm gonna go see what's up to Chengis. Chengis, what are you doing over there? Come on! I think you saw me? Well, your boy Chengiz is one of 71 players remaining in the tournament. Blind still 3,000, 6,000 with a 500 ante. Love that guy. Action has been folded around to Martin Jakobsen. 5-3 off, he marks. Chengiz Aluzu. Queen Jack off in the hijack. Here we go again. He raises to 12,000. He's adjusting, he's min-raising now. You can't figure this guy out. It's called balancing, James. 10 7 suited for Vladimir Gesh combined, and he three bets the button, makes it 30,000. He's obviously looking to play a big pot with whom he considers to be the whirling dervish. 8 9 suited. Juicy looking hand, but Devisher is out of position. The Belgian pro gives up his big blind. It's back on Aluzu. Now, unlike the last hand, Queen Jack is not suited, and he is not in position. No shame in folding this. Cool. Likes to call, does Chengiz. 
We all knew he was going to call. The Gesh combine in position with the pre-flop betting lead. Neither player hits the flop. Vlad basically has to bet here. It's like doubling down on 11. You just have to do it. Aluzu has checked, and Gesh combine does continue for 40,000. We know Aluzu likes the call, but I'd be very surprised to see him float this one. He finds the fold button. Well played by Geshkinbein, isolated pre-flop, took it down with a C-bet on the flop. Chengis found the fold he needed, only one street too late. Lad's a happy man. Hashtag humble, hashtag humility, hashtag hope Chengis a loser doesn't have Twitter. On to the next hand. Florian Donut will be first to speak. Ace five under the gun, he faults. Martin Jakobsen faults. Eight four of diamonds for Cengiz Alusu. But they're suited. They're <laughs> almost connected. James, this poor guy, he's totally card dead. Can you at least name check him again? Walter Beckman. Gesh combining the cutoff, raises with pocket fours, makes it 13K. Carla Niemi has Jack nine suited on the button. We know Gesh combined is going to be raising pretty wide from the cutoff. Niemi three bets to 32 and a half. Niemi's barely played a hand, but it'll be tough to get someone to lay down a pair with such a small three bet. How much are you playing behind? Uh, 400 to both. Okay. 400 total. Vlad's getting like three to one, and at worst, he's a four to one dog, not to mention his implied odds if he catches a set. Gesh combined makes the call. Let's go to the flop. Which is king five deuce with two clubs. Flush draw for Niemi. Not a bad flop for two fours. Gesh combined checks. Niemi continues for 42,500. And Gesh combined makes a quick call. It's a good bet by Niemi. Sometimes your opponent will fold, other times you'll build a pot if you hit your flush. Gesh combined still good and also has a straight draw to go with his pair. He checks to Niemi, who does not bet again. He checks behind. And the board pairs on the river. Now, obviously, you can't peel the flop of two fours every time, but you can't fold either. Sometimes your opponent will just shut down. Gesh combined checks. And Niemi checks behind. Vlad obviously thought there was a better shot. Niemi would fire the river than he would call at this point. And knowing the hands, I agree. You had a flush throw. Yeah. But I probably wouldn't fold that. Yeah. Cool story, bro. In fact, Vlad Gesh combined has tons of cool stories. Let's hear some. I think the APTs are very well organized, professionally run, always big events, always keeping the promises. I like traveling, snow sports and water sports mostly. Snowfest was an awesome place. You could go skiing uh, when you bust, unfortunately. I didn't bust, so I didn't have time for skiing for the next time. Berlin is cool. I love the city, and uh, it's a big tournament out here. Big buy-in, a lot of people, big prize pool. Fun. I enjoyed the bubble quite a lot. I had a ridiculous table, everybody kept folding. I raised literally every hand and they still kept folding. It was just easy money, you know. I'm heading for the first place, obviously. I'm not gonna knit up before the final table just to make it. Winning an EPT in Europe, that is definitely the most prestigious thing to do. The uh, frame got a little cut off there. What you couldn't see is that what he actually wrote was, I heart Vlad. There's the trophy they're playing for. Is it made of candy? Because it looks delicious. No idea. Try licking it. I'll be right back. Andreas Vlakos is making the same mistake twice, playing post-flop against Vanessa Selbst. Oh, Andreas, don't you know you're betting with Vanessa's chips? She's just letting you hold them for her. He bets 50,500 on that king high flop. Here comes the hammer. Vanessa raises to more than 130,000 and Vlakos insta-folds. See ya! Well, maybe he learned his lesson this time. Vanessa Selbst 
firmly among the tournament chip leaders with nearly 540,000 in chips. Also on the leaderboard, Cesar Garcia, Cengiz Aluzu, Bahadir Kilakaza, two of our former EPT champions, Anton Wig and Vladimir Gesh combine. But the man to beat right now, tournament chip leader Mark Wright. He's playing more than a million. Chip leader involved in a hand. Chip leader involved in a hand. Let's take it to the table. Let's check in on the outer tables where we find Mark Wright playing against Andrei Zachenko. Wright has just raised the Russian, and Zachenko lets it go. The new chip leader is a cruel and vengeful chip leader. He does not show mercy to others. Indeed, after winning that pot, he now has nearly 1.2 million in chips. Sick. While we're out in the field, let's check in on one of our former EPT champions, Kevin McPhee, playing against one of the nearly men on the EPT, Andrew Chen. McPhee's bet the turn, and Chen's called. The board is ace, jack, deuce, nine with two hearts. The seven of diamonds comes in on the river. Right now, Kevin McPhee is executing perfect cowboy face. I think it's giving him the slight edge in his hand. McPhee in position to bet the river. And that's what he does. 44,000. See? Cowboy face is so powerful that Andrew Chen literally lost his breath for a second. It should be banned, honestly. McPhee now up to 556,500. We'll take a short break and we'll leave you with some gratuitous sacks. I see what you did there, and I like it. PokerStars.com EBT Berlin. The German capital has one of the oldest tram systems in the world, stretching over 100 miles, transporting thousands of people 24 hours a day. Well, from one rail to another, and it seems even eliminated pros are sticking around to watch the action. Let's join them in the excitement as we head back to our feature table. Coincidentally, all those players who stuck around have major pieces of players still alive in this tournament. Funny how that works. Actions on Martin Jakobsen. Under the gun, he picks up Jack-10 suited and raises to 12,000. Wouldn't it be Jack-10 suited? Pocket Kings for Walter Beckman. Looks like Walter's finally going to play a hand. He's been pretty card dead. Hasn't been involved much. Any raise is going to send a clear message, but he just calls. Interesting just call, leaving himself only 10 big blinds behind. Very sniggy. 9-10 suited for Kuhn de Vischer on the button. De Vischer is drawing oh so close to dead in this spot. Still very tempting hand to play multiple ways. He lets it go. Kenny Hicks in the small blind. Will pass. And Florian Donut in the big blind. Timberlake, I loved you in In Time. Just kidding, I hated In Time. Worst poker scene ever. <laughs> Donut gives up the big blind. We go heads up to the flop. In a world of poker scenes that are terrible, that is saying a lot. For the flop, nine jack queen. Okay, well, neither of these guys is ever getting away from this. Jakobsen checks. He's got second pair and an up and down draw. Beckman with an over pair and a gut shot. Beckman bets 25,500. Too many draws out there. Definitely a good spot for Beckman to bet. Jakobsen raises enough to put Beckman all in. Easy raise, you might already have the best hand. If not, you're not likely to be drawing dead. Beckman calls, and we'll see he is a 71% favorite to double up through Martin Jakobsen. Beckman's in really good shape, especially considering he's holding two blockers. Jakobsen needs a king, jack, or eight on the river. It's a three. Nothing you could really do there, Marty. Hand was totally standard. It was handered. Well played by Beckman for not scaring off his action pre-flop. I'd have been all in so fast, people would have folded on other tables. Beckman's still way below average in chips, as is Martin Jacobson, less than 100K now. To our secondary feature table, which features Kevin McPhee. He's involved in a hand against Andreas Vlakos. Vlakos has called Kevin's bet on the flop. Turn. 
brings the nine of clubs. Lots of draws out there now. Two flush draws, straight draws. Kevin McPhee has checked. Andreas Vlakos checks behind the eight of diamonds on the river. Maybe a little snake bit from turn bets after getting his lunch eaten by Vanessa Selbst earlier. Kevin McPhee checks the river. Four cards straight out there. Vlakos checks behind. And he doesn't want to show. Two pair. Top two, and he checked it on the turn and river. The pros have got this guy running scared. McPhee shows Ace King the chips get shipped across to Vlakos. Notice how he gave up those three stacks of purple. He now has doubled the tournament average. Kevin McPhee still comfortable, sitting on about half a million. 66 players left in the field. Let's head back to our main feature table. Blind still 3-6. Chengiz Aluzu. Queen five off. He'll muck that. Valter well, Beckman got that nice double up with Kings and goes back to being card dead. See you. Vladimir Gesh combined with Jack eight suited. Raising from early position makes it 13,000. What's Niemi up to here? Nine ten of clubs from the hijack. He three bets to 32,500. I'm all for playing 10 9 suited from late position, but another option is just to call so that you don't get four bet. Small blind folds, as does the big. Play one. Gesh combine makes the call. We're going to the flop. This is a very loose call. Not sure I love it unless he's going to make some kind of move on the flop. Never underestimate the poker power of a monkey. <laughs> An ace, king, seven flop. Gesh combined quickly checks. Checks to the razor. Looks like Niemi's going to continue. And he does. The fin makes it 25 and a half thousand. With only 10 high. If there was going to be a flop move, this would be the time for it. Vlad said he wasn't going to knit up, but if you ask me, folding there with a hand as good as jack high is awfully nitty. Naomi adds 45,000 chips to his stack. And I'll argue that folding jack high there is not particularly nitty, Joe. All right, well, maybe that was a little harsh. Vladimir Geshkinbein, as you can see here, has been anything but nitty. Of his last 35 hands, he's played almost half of them. Unfortunately for him, he's lost more of them than he's won. He's been active, but there's only two or three hands in there where he's even getting a little out of line. And the hands he's lost with have mostly been decent hands. So while he's not playing nitty, he's not really playing all that crazy either. Though he could have stood to fold that Jack-8 suit in the last hand. Just saying. He's on a bit of a downswing at the moment. Playing just over half a million in chips. We have Walter Beckman, his first to speak here. He folds under the gun. And Gesh Combine is now getting a little out of line. Raising to 13k with 7-3. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for making a liar out of me. Getting folds from most of the table, just the blinds to get through. Martin Jakobsen gives up the small. Chengiz Aluzu in the big. Looks like he's calling with King Jack. Well, we already know what Gesh Kimbine thinks of Aluzu, and it's probably not total coincidence that Vlad all of a sudden comes out raising with seven tray on Aluzu's big blind. Top pair for Aluzu. Vlad should be good for at least one bet here to continue. Aluzu checks to him. Gesh Kimbine does continue for 16,000. It's about half the pot. Why bet more when you get just as much information from betting small? Aluzu makes the call. I'd expect Vlad to slow down considerably. Five of spades on the turn. Aluzu checks a second time. And Gesh Kimbine does slow down. He checks behind. Told you so. Queen of clubs on the river. Tough to get paid here. Well, Aluzu goes for value. Bet steady 5,000. Gesh Kimbine quickly mucks. And Chengis Khan continues to terrorize this table. Up to 558,000. Gesh Kimbine was happy with his seat position at the start of the day, but things have not been going well for him. Happy enough to tweet about it. I notice his thumbs have stopped Twittering now. Maybe Elusu got Twitter on the last break. Gesh Kimbine, not the only former EPT winner who's having a bad day three. Anton Wiggs started as chip leader, but has struggled to win a pot today. 
He and Tim Bettengen are facing a bet of 18,000 from Vanessa Selbst on the turn. Bettengen's made the call. I'll tell you this, it'd be pretty bizarre to see Anton overcalling in this spot. He raises, makes it a total of 72,000. Now it looks like Selbsty's not going anywhere. Vanessa makes the call. Okay, now it'll be pretty bizarre to see Bettingen overcall. Bettingen gets out of the way. We're heads up to the river, which is the Ten of Spades. A couple of very specific straights came in, but that's about it. Having raised the turn, Anton Wig is loading up to fire the river. How much is that? 142,000. Pretty big bet. Vanessa calls. Fairly quick call. King high for Wig. I'm sorry, yeah. And Vanessa, river to straight. I had river plans, but no, I didn't. Wow, King high was good until the river. Vanessa had river plans, huh? Apparently they were very simple, just two words actually. Get there. Just thought that offsuit time was coming. I just thought the offsuit time was coming. I said I thought the offsuit time was coming, you know? Yeah, I figured. Awkward! So contrasting fortunes for Anson Wig and Vanessa Selbst. Wig no longer on the leaderboard. Vanessa Selbst now in second position behind Mark Wright. The two other players chasing their second EPT title are still in the top ten. Kevin McPhee and Vladimir Geshkinbein. Summarize the day, uh, I've been luck boxing around and winning the flips. My table uh, has played pretty tough. I have some good players on my left, but uh, I consider myself good as well. So I'm not scared, but there are some which I try to stay out of the way. My expectation is to reach a million. That's my dream for today. I'm not sure if it's even possible, but that's what I'm going for. Uh, to win here in Berlin would be pretty sick. Um, I mean, 800k is obviously a lot of money. And also, like, you know, a bit of recognition. Like, I've never, I've, I've won some money online, like online, but I've never really, I've never won anything live um, and it's, it's how you get recognized in this game you got to win a live tournament so um, hopefully uh, you know leads to better things so next time tempers reach boiling point when two seasoned pros collide at our feature table i have an ace nine what just happened he like goes after me every time i have no idea why if you don't adapt your ranges to a player like Vanessa, you're going to get chewed up and spit out. We still have three EPT champions in the field, or the real chance of becoming the first ever two-time champion. Join us for the conclusion of day three of EPT Berlin as we play down to the final 24.